Hello everyone, hope you're doing so well and welcome to this little oil painting time lapse of a bunny rabbit and a vlog as well. And here is an oil painting that I have finished of a deer in a bunny rabbit forest and it is actually drying, it's just been varnished and it should be in my Etsy store very very soon, in fact probably when this video goes up. Here is some dodgy piano playing and I realised I need to learn some new pieces because I haven't played the piano in so long, which is bad. Um, and here I'm getting back to normal again, rather showing you my oil paintings that I'm working on. So the first one is of this frog with a lamp going into a forest and there's like this rickety rope bridge thing that it's about to cross and this is just sort of the second layer so I haven't really done that much on it which is a shame but coming soon watch this space. Next painting is a painting that is actually nearly finished it just needs a signature and just a little bit of work in the upper right corner and then it's completely finished and this will be varnished and in my store very soon I'm so excited to varnish this one because it actually turned out fine I was a bit worried about it for a little while but now it's fine and here is a frog <laughs> eating a blackberry so I was thinking when painting just another frog thinking what could it be eating a blackberry came to mind blackberry with a knife and fork so it could be an evening meal. And here is an unboxing of some art supplies that I have from Jackson's Art Supplies, probably one of the biggest art stores um, in the UK. They tend to have a lot of specialist art materials and I, <laughs> I had real trouble opening the box. I was trying to make this like a really slick unboxing, which looked really like professional and actually they'd wrapped up the materials so well that I found it really hard to actually open um, but it actually was really well packaged it's just, <laughs> it's just um, my error so yeah so here is some continuous unboxing of a box a box within a box and the art materials that I got were actually nothing exciting funnily enough it was just um, some gesso boards and they are happen to be on sale at the moment, which is really great, but they pretty much all sold out. So they ordered this brush, which was the wrong size. And I kind of knew, I knew it was the wrong size, but I ordered it anyway, which was just, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I don't actually need this size brush. I needed a tiny, fine brush, a size one, which is my favorite size for like sort of painting almost everything. And so I don't know why I bought that. And then this is the six by six panel. So I'm gonna to have to get used to using six by six panels for a while now until they come back in stock. Through the colors. So the first color is transparent yellow oxide. Great for glazing. Next color is Caput Mortem. This looks different in every brand I find. This is more reddish type of tone. Uh, next up we have raw sienna. Um, next one is Indian yellow, really famous colour of course, everyone uses that one. And next we have a mixed turquoise, it's great to get a mixed turquoise because there is a pain to mix actually. <laughs> King's blue light is the next colour, amazing for highlights. Next we have titanium white, this is a Michael Harding one, doesn't contain zinc, so if you're worried about cracking and things you want to get the one without zinc. Next one is the ultramarine red and ultramarine uh, violet, that's it. <laughs> and they're both next to each other. Then we have phthalo blue. Then the next one is a quinacridone colour. So once again, really great for glazing. Next we have transparent red oxide. Next we have burnt sienna, burnt umber, excuse me. Next we have ivory black. And then finally we have phthalo green. So last week I was moaning <laughs> that I couldn't upload any paintings to my Etsy store because I had so many on the go and nothing was finished. Well now, thank the Lord, there are paintings in my Etsy store that I have recently just put up. So some have started to become finished now, which is so amazing and I'm very relieved. Um, and I was sort of feeling a bit demotivated about things because of that because they were taking so long but actually I managed to solve that situation by actually finishing them. <laughs>
So I thought I would do a film review for you because I thought last time it was quite fun to do one. And so there was this movie that I saw a while back and I thought I would roast it a bit because it was not a bad film. I just like to say the name of it is Jacob's Ladder, <laughs> which I don't know why I find the title extremely funny, but that's the name of the film. And it's one of those movies that has been rated as like a cult classic. And I actually used to see it on lists sometimes that would say like, oh, you know, most underrated film. And as I said before, I don't want to offend anyone who absolutely loves this film because there are a lot of fans of this film. So I don't want to offend anyone. And also this film, as I say, is not a bad film. It's just not what I was expecting. And I think that that sometimes can skew your view of a movie before watching it or reading a book. And in this film, the trailer, when I saw the trailer, gave me the indication that this movie was about Vietnam and, and the harrowing things that the soldiers had to go through. The exception was this movie was going to be like that movie The Killing Fields, even though that film obviously is about Pol Pot and it's a completely different political situation. It's just I thought it was going to be really hard-hitting in that sense. But this movie is not like that at all. This film is about Vietnam in the sense that Tim Robbins' character Jacob, he is a soldier in Vietnam, but that's where the story about Vietnam, I think, sort of ends. In, and actually what happens is, right from the beginning of the film, the story seems to be about this guy Jacob's personal life. So in this movie, Tim Robbins, <laughs> at the beginning, um, has this amazing life. He has a really nice wife. He has lovely children. He has this massive house, which is actually quite unexplained because he seems to have a massive house but he is actually a male man and I wondered to myself do male men in uh, America get paid a lot because in the UK people who are postmen they don't really get paid that much so I was kind of <laughs> I was kind of confused by that bit right from the beginning but anyway he's left his his perfect lifestyle behind and he has left his wife and children and um, basically had an affair with this random woman <laughs> who lives in a small apartment and you know that she is obviously completely different from the wife because she doesn't wear a top <laughs> during the film so she's obviously the quote unquote quote unquote sexy woman that he has left his wife for which is all indicated by the fact that she doesn't wear a top and the wife does wear a top so obviously she's you know the wife and therefore has to be left and so um then the movie goes on this really long sort of meandering story of Tim Robbins sort of crying and looking at pictures of his kids but then still hanging out with the the sexy um woman he's having an affair with and then intermittently all these horrific flat like sort of flashes of horror creep into the film so at one point he wakes up and he's really sweaty another point another point he's so sweaty he has to jump into a bath you know that's that's you know quite intense levels of, of sweat quite obviously and then there are other times when he sees some sort of killer octopus chasing after the woman he's having an affair with and they sort of do something quite distasteful to the woman or the woman does something distasteful to the octopus I couldn't quite work it out because it was just I was laugh out loud funny at that point um and so during all of this I was thinking where is where's the bit about the war where, where's the bit about Vietnam when is this going to come in see throughout the film or I say obviously because it wasn't obvious to me until I got about halfway to the film and then it I all became very obvious and I started to realise that this was going to be one of those movies that has one of those plot twists in the end which basically says which basically says you've been watching this whole film because you've been interested in an intellectual story about Vietnam but actually what you're going to get is just some meandering tale about this male man's personal life with a bunch of random flashes of horror in it and then at the end there's a like surprise actually it was a all bunch of flashbacks he was having because he was suffering from trauma because he was a soldier in Vietnam and apparently he had taken some drugs 
that they did used to give to soldiers, which I was unaware of actually, which was interesting. But this was all explained in sort of like a footnote at the end of the film. <laughs> like sort of like, oh, P.S., you know, you've been watching this film because actually there were sort of drugs being given to soldiers to make them fight better. And these drugs were not, you know, given with their consent or, or they weren't really aware of what they were taking, which is actually a as I say, a fascinating story. And had the movie been about that, that would have been a fascinating film. Something that is would probably, you know, be at the number one of all the, you know, lists of greatest movies at all of all time. But instead, the movie, as I say, put it right at the end. It's sort of like, you know, just near the credits, like, oh yeah, by the way. <laughs> and it was like, thanks, you know, I've watched this whole film and just to see this male man who is apparently irresistible to women. And I, I thought that was quite unusual because I didn't really see why. And I couldn't really understand why. But I wonder if halfway through the film, Tim Robbins thought, oh, this film is a bit rubbish. That's just, can you just, he said to the director, like, can you just make me look irresistible or something? And then the director was like, yeah, like, through the film, I'll just, I'll make sure that all the women find you irresistible. So anyway... In conclusion, it wasn't my cup of tea, but if you are into films that have random bits of horror in, and I'm actually more melodramas, like if you like a melodrama with, you know, a, a lots of um, kind of slightly hysterical screaming about you left your wife and, and all that type of melodrama stuff, then you will enjoy this film. But of course, I've told the whole story just now, so you may not want to see it because of that but it is a well-made film and actually I believe the director is famous for making you know sort of more intense um thrillers but very much on the sort of you know not on the war front let's put it that way it's definitely more this style of thriller so it's it's not a bad film and I totally understand why some people like it it's a movie about a serious subject that really explores it in depth. If that's what you're looking for, you're not going to get the result that you hope for. At least that was my experience anyway. So I do hope you enjoyed this little review. <laughs> like and subscribe tell me what you think tell me if you have seen a good film recently and also if you would like some more film reviews let me know because i don't know if this is just like boring and people are like well we don't care about your opinion because after all my opinion is actually irrelevant but anyway um, so i do hope you enjoyed this video and i do hope you enjoyed this time lapse this bunny is saying you know very important things and i, and I really do hope you will get some additional um more sophisticated attire as the painting layers continue. So yeah, so I do hope you enjoyed this video. Um, as I say, enjoy the rest of the- <laughs>